Okay, friends, we are back and it is time for my favorite video of the month. I get to show you everything I made in the month of September and I'm so excited. Almost all of these things are makes I haven't done before with just a few old ones sprinkled in and uh, stay tuned to the end if you want to see my favorite, the hardest and the one I gave up on. There's, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> so hang tight. Uh, we're gonna jump right in. I'm Karen. This is Yarn and Whimsy. I'm so happy to be hanging out with you guys. Okay, I'm gonna warn you guys right off the bat. This is a long one. I have made so much stuff this month and so many different things. I don't have a lot of multiples, a lot of one-off items and new patterns that I've tried. So, you know what? Grab your coffee, grab some water, grab a soda, whatever it is that makes your heart happy and your yarn and your hook and let's do some work while we hang out together and I show you all of the new things I've been up to. I did get accepted into the craft show that I hoped to get accepted into. So that market is the end of October. So a few of these makes from the last few days are because I was trying to start prepping for that event. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to show you some of the things that I have made before, but I'm making again. And they, let's just start with these mushy pops. I made, these are the mushy pops by Cable and Canvas. Like every month, I'm gonna put up in one of these corners the picture of the pattern, what it should look like. And then I'll show you mine. <laughs> and everybody's gonna be linked down below. So if I don't say the name, just look below or on the screen and you will find out who it is from. So these are the Mushy Pops from Cable and Canvas, and I made eight. I made two blue, two pink, two of this golden color. Look at the eyes. And two of this premier chunky rain color that's so pretty. It's kind of like a greenish grayish blue. Altogether, I just think they're a really cute little palette, and that's why I chose them. So I made eight of those. They're super quick. I made eight of those, and three of these guys in one night. And these are chickens. <laughs> these are those chickens from Oak and Marlowe. These, these and the mushrooms are the easiest patterns. They are super easy to memorize and they make up really quick, all of them. I have two that I made in different uh, plus velvet yarn. This is the Bernat Plus, so it's a little bigger and chunkier. And this is the, which one is this? This is, oh, this is Mainstays from Walmart. It is so pretty. This is their Velvet Yarn. And this is the Velvet Plus from Burnett. This guy is so big and chunky. Uh, they are awesome. I really like these. Plus, I made three in this Burnett Tweed color. Three chunky little chickens and the Burnett Tweed. And I'm going to finish up this skein with all chickens. I've already started a couple today before I filmed, but it's October, so you'll see them later. So those are in the basket. So what else have I made? Oh, a turtle. I made another turtle. This is an all from Jade pattern. This is before she switched. She added on the uh, half moon legs. So this is from all from Jade and super cute. I just used some of my um, frosted Bernat yarn and purple Bernat for that one. This is really cute. I did not cut all the strings off of this one yet, but you will get an idea of what I'm going for here. This was me just playing around. I was like toying with the idea of doing a gnome pattern and I played with a couple different versions. This is the only one that I could finished enough that I wanted to show you guys. And then all these gnome patterns came out of nowhere. So I don't know if I'll purchase one of those or if I'll just keep doing my own thing with the gnome because it's a pretty easy, straightforward pattern. It follows kind of the same no sew, those same kind of concept for how you would do this. And it turns out super cute. So unless you guys want me to work on that, I think there are lots of patterns out there. So there's no picture for that one because I just, I made this pumpkin, which is so easy. This was a super easy pumpkin to make. This is that style of pumpkin 
that I had made the one was like a big round ball and then you tie the yarn around to kind of bring it in to give it that pumpkin shape. So this one is not that. This one is a big rectangle that you make back and forth. You just chain one and turn, chain one and turn at the end of every row until you have this big, um, this big rectangle. And then you just cinch it at the bottom and at the tops after you stuff it. And then you make a cute little stem to put in it. But it turned out really cute. I did not make a lot of pumpkins. I just made this one because the market that I am going to is October 28th and 29th. I feel like that's maybe a little late to be doing a lot of pumpkins. This though. bad boy has been in my background. You can see I had to scavenge my background to remove some of the things that I made this month to show you guys. Never fear, I will have stuff back up there soon. But this, this is the squid pattern that All From Jay just came out with. It is completely no so. I really had fun making it. It was way easier than I anticipated it would be. And it worked up way faster. So this was done with jumbo yarn. I did this with jumbo yarn. So it worked up pretty big. It would be a little bit smaller if you did it. This was... I don't know what kind this is. This is that mystery jumbo yarn I got from Premier. And it has, it's this purple color. And when we, when we opened it in that video, it had those little flecks of like off white and gray. And you can kind of see them in a few places. But when it worked up, gosh, those aren't really even hardly noticeable. It just looks like purple, but it's really cute. And I think it's great. I'm gonna definitely be taking that to the market and I'll probably make a couple more. Okay, this guy. This is a YouTube tutorial pattern from Rose and Lily and I love Rose and Lily. She is such a good teacher and her videos are so easy to follow. She explains everything really well, but I do not like this guy. This is this hedgehog and I, okay, he is cute, right? I don't have a problem with the finished product, but making all of these loops, these little, uh, like uh, these were rough. It took a lot to make all of these little frills here. What do you call them? The spikes or I don't remember, but it took forever and it was hard work. I mean, it was hard work. And I don't think I'll ever make another hedgehog this way again. He is really cute, but this was not a relaxing pattern for me to make. It was a little stressful and I was really pushing through. I was pushing through on this one. So if you guys know of a better hedgehog pattern, not better, this one's fabulous. It really is. Um, if you know of an easier hedgehog pattern, if you could hook me up, I think hedgehogs are adorable, but I can't, I can't do that one again. These are part of a six pack no sew pattern. And it was an, it turned out, they turned out really well. The first one I made was this little seal and I didn't finish his tail for some reason. It was giving me grief. And this is my fault because you're supposed to, the pattern you're supposed to leave it open and then work the tail. And I got down to the bottom and I just didn't look at the pattern, I guess. I was just like, yep, I'm just gonna close that hole, cut it off and fasten off because I was just, it's a habit. But I love how these little bobble stitches work up here on the mouth for the seal. It's so cute. And like I said, my fault. I did not follow, I did not follow directions. You should read patterns before you start. You should read patterns before you start. Lesson of the day. So this one, I, I will eventually figure out how to put a fin on the bottom, I think, because otherwise he's super cute. But I wanted to remember to show you guys and explain what I had done wrong there. This one is the same pattern in a Bernat blanket that was in a Parfait Chunky. This one's in Burnett Blanket. I did the right thing this time. I followed the pattern and he turned out adorable. I just think he's adorable. So he turned out super cute. I highly recommend 
the ones that I've made. I made one other one in this pattern pack with the sixth, and it is this little panda. It is adorable, and it worked up really easy. There's a little tail on the back. The way she explains how to do these baubles, they turn out so clean. They look great. The, uh, the only thing is, is that this did not pass through quality control at my house because there are not black circles around the eyes, which makes it so much easier to make because you're not doing all those little color changes. But uh, yeah, quality control was not impressed at my house. Um, so, but he wasn't going to keep it anyway. So I think it's cute. I would make it again. I would sell it. I like these a lot. Uh, just FYI, I switched to the Burnett Blanket because my white parfait chunky is just trash. It is the worst. In fact, I'm going to email them. I'll let you guys know how that goes. One of you commented the same thing to me. I think it is this particular lot number, this 4755. These seem to be the culprit. This one is 5199 and it is much better. I can work with this. So, but this one, trash. It just, it disintegrates in my hands. It just falls apart. It's bare. You can't, oh, look at that. I just barely ran my hand over it. Just barely. And it's just coming apart. It just, this is trash. I'm going to reach out to Premiere. I wonder if this is a problem everybody's having. If you have had any trouble with your Parfait Chunky White, let me know. Is it 4755? Because, so you won't find a lot of white things in my These are adorable. And I showed these on my Instagram. And I think on a YouTube short, maybe. This is, this is, um, this is a designer on Etsy. And their patterns are really cheap. A dollar something per pattern. And I just was really curious how they would work up. And I wanted to try some of them. So I got three. I've worked up two so far. So first, this is the bunny. And it comes with a pants pattern too, which I did not make. Because he's so cute. This worked up so nice. I love how the, this pattern works up the ears. They turned out so good. There's, they've got so much good drape to them. The way they move is so adorable. It's so cute. It's got a cute little tail in the back. This was a great pattern for a very reasonable price. I could see myself making this in lots of different colors. This I made in the Premier Basic Chenille. So it's a smaller than if I had made it in the Burnett. This is the Basic Chenille versus the Burnett. So it'd be bigger if you made it in Burnett or uh, a Sweet Snuggles or Chenille Home or an XL yarn, but he's just really cute. I'm gonna try more patterns from this designer for sure. And I tried this little mouse one. Oh my gosh, you guys, could you die? These are so cute. The, the ears are ridiculously big in like the best way. I, it's everything I want in a mouse ear. <laughs> at the tail all curling in the back super long these are just so stinking adorable these patterns are really good i really enjoyed it i'm gonna make some more i'm gonna look on their storefront some more you guys should too because they worked up super easy the pattern was very well written there weren't maybe as many pictures it was like it was a really decent pattern i have paid way more for way less and been happy. And this, I would buy from this shop all day long. I will be. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this. Okay, so this is from Mama Made Minis. And this is one of her Whimsy Bub, the little Whimsy Bub dinosaur. The Whimsy Bub pattern I bought, it's, uh, it, it's in one of the corners. It's got three or four different animals in the basic pattern. And then there is an add-on, a modification that you can get for free to add on to it with more, like a fox in that pattern. There's a mouse, there's a fox, there's the dino, there's a frog, there's a whole slew of animals. And they have, you could do a mushroom on top or a flower on top and just to kind of go crazy with your colors and your ideas. 
I really like that idea, but I haven't gone back to it after this because this guy was a challenge for me to get the spikes to all line up right. I had to rework the pattern a couple of times. So if you make this, I would make this in a sturdy yarn like Bernat, like I have here, because uh, if you did it in Parfait Chunky, I think you'd be sad if you had to frog and redo to get everything lined up exactly right. A lot of times when I'm going through a pattern, it takes me a little bit to figure out that this didn't line up quite right and I have to go back. And even still, it's just a little not lined up perfect, but he turned out cute. I don't know, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Whimsy bubs, super cute patterns. I'm gonna have to play with more of them. This is the only one so far. Happy with how it turned out. I, I really like how the legs turned out and this is just a really big bobble stitch. But look, it's kind of got, it's, it's better than your typical bobble stitch leg. So, all right, moving on. Oh, this one. This was a new shop I bought from two. This guy is the cutest little puffer fish, this little blow fish. Really quick make, just got a few bobble stitches to make the puffers. These are all, it's all no sew. These are all done um, onto the fish after you make it. And really cute really like that one. I think it's super cute. I don't know. Some of these patterns I really love to make and I've had so much fun making them. I'm not sure if this would be a good seller at the market. So I'm going to take this one. We'll see. I probably won't invest a ton of time making a lot of some of these patterns till I know if they're going to be good. So we'll see. Okay, these guys, there's actually a fourth one of these. I'm going to put the picture. These are just me messing around. There's not a pattern for these. But when I am, I don't know, just wanting to play with yarn and not really wanting to fuss with a pattern, I just make little monsters. So these little polka dots, these are my little monsters. This one is like a little flower monster. It needs like, I think an eye right here, but I haven't done that yet. And there's another little one too that's just like a smaller version of this with legs and arms, only one set of arms instead of two sets of arms. These are just fun for me to make. I might turn it into a pattern of some, if I get enough of them that I'm really happy with, I might put patterns actually together on paper for them for you guys, but, uh, or do a tutorial on one of them. This, I think, I don't know if this guy or this guy is my favorite right now. But I like them. They really are relaxing for me to do. And they're quick makes. And I really want to make some more monsters. Because I just like monsters. Fun fact, my favorite Disney pin collection that I have is Monsters. Really love Monsters, Inc. And all the fun monsters in that show. I made one more little octo. I also, we're not going to pull them all out. But I did make all of these little octos. If you saw that video where I made octos out of, that's the all from Jade pattern. And I made them in all the different plush yarns that I own to kind of compare. So if you have not seen that video, you can go check it out. I'm not gonna pull all those out, but I am gonna keep them because just like I pulled them out a little bit ago, it's nice for me to be able to pull them out and just compare and remember size difference, what it's gonna be like. I think this is Bernat Baby and this is Sweet Snuggles Light. And so I can kind of tell like size-wise what's gonna happen when I work up a pattern in a different kind of yarn. So I'm keeping them, they're mine. I did another popper. This is a little flower popper. I had done that one, I think last month, and then this one I did this month. I did another Flipsy the Frog. This one's a little smaller. Um, he's so cute. I could. I would make so many more of him if uh, I didn't have to sew on the eyes. <laughs> and look, I sewed him on kind of wonky, but I don't care, he's pretty cute. If I didn't have to sew on these eyes, I would make these all day long because I just love this pattern, but I do have to sew on the eyes. So I only make him every now and then. I'm gonna make, I'm, I'm gonna cave and I'm gonna make some leggy frogs this month. And then we'll take them both to market and we'll see what happens. I just think these are cuter. But also the leggy frogs are probably easier. So we'll see. Um, oh, these. I made these just yesterday. 
because I'm looking for some cheap little small items to have for like just a few dollars at my market. And these are little pocket, pocket this is a free pattern. These are little pocket jellies. So I made this. This is in that rain color from Premier. And it's adorable. It took 10 minutes to make maybe. It's like nothing and such a little bit of yarn. And then I made it again in this jumbo yarn. This is actually Sweet Snuggles. It looks the same as that yarn we got in the mystery bag, but it is not. This is actually Sweet Snuggles. So the only thing is on the, I think it looks super cute in this little yarn. In this big yarn, I feel like these legs, see they're already kind of coming apart. The way it does the legs, I think I have to do it different. So it would take me a little more time because the legs just are not holding up on it. So I think I would have to figure out a different way to do the legs, but I don't think that would be hard. And so I'm gonna play around with this pattern and tweak it a little because these little pocket jellies I think are really cute and you can just sell them for three to five dollars maybe in your booth and they would be so good for kids who just wanna pick up a little something to squish on to. So we're getting to my favorites, guys. This is from, I think it's False Bubbles. It's a YouTube tutorial for this chonky little frog. He's so cute. And he's got a little behind, which is also so cute. That is so cute. I've only made the one. I probably will make more because I have uh, quite a bit of this color handy. And he worked up so quick and easy. And I think he's adorable. So what do you guys think? Chonky frogs or leggy frogs? What do you think's better? I just think he's really cute. I like him. The little butt is adorable. This is also a free pattern. It is from Wonder Crochet on her blog. And oh my gosh, guys, look, it's a little froggy stuck in a flower. He is so cute. And this was so much fun to make. This one worked up so fun. So this is all no sew. The way these attach, the petals, is no sew. The only thing that you are sewing on are these eyes up here. Everything else is worked in. So it's super easy and super fun to make. And I felt like the end result was incredibly satisfying. I mean, he is just so cute. I'm gonna definitely be making more of these because they don't take a ton of time for, I think how cute they turn out. I feel like when you have an animal by itself, like a frog, I think that when you add something like petals, I think the interest level just goes up immensely, right? Like I just feel like you could sell this and this would be, this would set it apart than just having a regular frog. And it was fun to make. All right, this, this one almost won the award for the hardest thing I made this month, but it did not. It got eclipsed late in the game. It got eclipsed. This is a free pattern on Instagram by Poggy's Place. And it was my first Poggy's Place pattern. And it is a butterfly. Okay, so this is great. The wings are great. Um, I didn't read the pattern correctly initially. The body, easy, no problem. So for the back, you are using a technique that I had never used before. And I did it wrong. I read it wrong. You were supposed to be crocheting into chain spaces. And I was not exactly crocheting into the right place. I, I just messed it all up. So I had to redo it. But when I redid it, the wings turned out really cute. You can see they're really cute how they turn out and how she gets them done with no sewing. Super, super innovative. Um, the, so that was challenging and that was hard. These stinkers up here though, I never did understand what she was trying to say in the pattern. I never did figure it out, but I did understand what the end result should be from the pictures. And so I just did my own thing and figured it out. But they just, the instructions on the pattern, I never, I never did sort that out completely. So that was a bummer and it made this one a headache enough for me that I haven't revisited it, even though I think it's really cute and it, it would probably go 10 times faster if I do it again. Uh, if you guys have made this one, let me know if you have any tips for, for these babies. I can do them my own way now, but I don't know that this is what she meant 
for these exactly because I did not. I abandoned the pattern on those. And uh, yeah, but it's really cute. I should make another one and see. I should pick up some pretty colors and make another one. You know what? Before we get into all the good stuff, let's get the bad news over with. This is the pattern that I have abandoned. I'm probably just going to throw... Oops. I'm probably just going to throw them away, like not literally this minute. But these are supposed to be a brontosaurus. And it's a no-so brontosaurus and a little one. And it's super cute. I will put a picture up here. I am sure this pattern is fabulous for other people. I couldn't get it to work for me. And I'll tell you why. It you are working up up the pattern from down from the legs you're going up and there's a big hole in the legs and when you go back down to close it that is where i messed up every time and i don't know that i messed up or if i just couldn't get it neat enough but it ends up being really ugly down here right it just doesn't come together clean for me the stitches don't come together cleanly and I just couldn't be happy with how it looked under here. I mean, you could just see it's not even, the stitches, the, the no even nice stitches like this. This was just a hot mess and I didn't want to finish it because I wasn't going to like it and it felt like a waste of effort uh, and time and yarn and stuffing to keep doing it. So I abandoned one, I gave up, I did another, I gave up and I decided maybe another day with another yarn in a new attitude. <laughs> I might need an attitude adjustment to tackle this one again, guys. So not the designer's fault. It's on me. I can't make it work. Um, or maybe it's just the type of pattern it is. Maybe you just have to be okay with it being messy under here when you're trying to join these legs together underneath after the fact. Maybe that's just the Maybe my tension was too loose or too tight. Or I don't know. But these are not, these these didn't make it, guys. Rest in peace, Brontos. Rest in peace. All right, good news now. This guy. This is a platypus pattern. And I love him. I love him. This was so easy. This turned out really quick, actually way faster than I imagined it would. I mean, this is just a cylinder you smush flat. I did the same thing on the legs, the tail, and then this big, just shaped body. I and mean, it's just shapes, very familiar shapes, works up really fast. The directions are fabulous. I, you do sew, you are sewing. I don't mind this kind of sewing that's easy and clean though. You just sew these on, you sew this on, you sew on the tail. And the result is awesome. This is not Perry the platypus. I did not give him a hat. And these are yellow, not orange. So it's not Perry, but I just liked this color scheme and I thought I would give it a go. So that one was super fun. It's a good palette cleanser. I told you guys I've kind of been obsessing over gnomes. This little gnome pattern, this is called the Wonderland Gnome from Raven and Jade. And he is like the leggy frog of gnomes. <laughs> and it was such a fun workup. I will tell you that it does get a little tricky for me inside when you're, when you're adding this body part to the hat because you're doing it in the back loops inside the hat. And this is just a really small area to work in and my hands are really big. And so I have to fuss a little bit with it. So that was a little challenging for me, but I've only made one. And I think that that'll get so much easier. I just need to have gotten through the first one. And the little nose is so cute. I'm gonna make a bunch of these. I'm going all in on gnomes <laughs> for the market because these are gonna be a small price tag. They're super cute. I think you could throw a yarn or a ribbon or something up here and make them into an ornament really easily. You can do them in a gazillion colors. I'm going to go all in on these gnomes and I'm going to make a bunch of them. Mark my words. Mark my words. There are going to be a bunch of gnomes popping up in next month's video. These are all ones I love now. I love all of these. These are from Poggy's Place too. 
and she's the one who did the butterfly. This is her full size axolotl and she does two different size axolotls. She has two different patterns, a smaller one and this bigger one. And I went with the bigger one. I made all these, these three in one night. They aren't hard. They work up, this is all one piece. And then all these attachments are no sew. They're crocheted on, but they're crocheted on in a really cool way. And the method that she uses to crochet them on is easier than a lot of the things that I have done before. You're, it's just, I like it, or it's more enjoyable for me. But you are fitting a lot of stitches in. Like there's so many stitches to get this effect. And for me, with this yarn, I think this is Big Twist and this is Bernat. And the Big Twist is just a tiny bit bigger than the Bernat. So I had to eliminate some of those stitches through here. I would do like one or two less on each side of this point in order to kind of make it be what I wanted it to be. So I think he's really, I think they're really cute. And then these down here, same thing. You are just stitching into it but in a really easy way. For some reason, this seemed a lot easier than some of the no sew ones that I have to stitch into and they feel like you are fighting with the stitches to let you put it where you need to and to keep it straight and from veering off in one direction or another. And this one I thought was just so much cleaner. I loved it. So I made the pink one, I made this blue one, um, and then Oh yeah, this is the problem one, hold on. And then I made this blue one here. This blue one, I put the frills, the front frills on upside down. So his face should be like this, um, but it's like this because I have put the feet under here and I've done this frill this way. I think he's still okay. I'm, I'm still gonna say he's all right. He's just got, he's just a little different. Just a little different, he's a little unique and I'm still gonna put him out for sale. I think he's still cute, but technically, the way the pattern's written, it should be like this. So the frills should be closer together on the top of the head and farther apart on the bottom, but I'm gonna go with it. Lesson learned. This is the f not the first time I have made this pattern. This is Mom Stachetti's cow pattern, and this is the Highland cow modification for it. And this time I, I, last time I made it in burnout blanket, this time I made it in parfait chunky. And it turned out so little and cute. He is so cute. I'm obsessed with this cute little cow. I just can't even stand it. In fact, I don't think this one's gonna make it to my market. I think it's gonna go to a friend. And so I'm gonna keep him on eat and happy, but I think he's the greatest. And I made him a friend and I had put these guys on my Instagram too. I made him a friend. I made him this cute little hippo. This is a totally different designer, totally different pattern. Although Mama Stichetti does have a hippo with a skirt or something, I think. But this, uh, this pattern I love. And this was actually a free pattern. And it was made in worsted weight yarn and I made it in parfait chunky instead. And it just turned out really cute. In fact, so cute, I've also made one in blue which is also adorable. Um, and this turned out just a little bigger. I don't know if I used a bigger hook. Oh no, this is Sweet Snuggles, that's why. This is Parfait Chunky and this one is in Sweet Snuggles, so it's a little bit bigger. I love them both and I will probably make more and I will be searching more. This is from Amigurumi Today, I think. I don't know, I'm gonna put it up here so you guys can see and I'll link it down below, but free pattern, really easy. These were really fun. I mean, it turned out really cute. I really like it. Can I say really anymore? So cute. Definitely gonna be doing more of those and definitely gonna be doing more of these cows because this is not also a mostly no-sew. It's no-sew for the body. You're stitching on these face pieces. So that's actually quite a few, one, two, three, four, five. And then this one, you are adding the hair. So it's a little more than the regular cow pattern, but worth it. So worth it, right? So worth it. We are nearing the end. So last month I showed you guys this one that I got from Mama Made Minis. It's lovey. This is last month. We won't dwell on it, but I found another lovey pattern. This one's not Mama Made. This is a different 
designer, a different sh Etsy shop, and I made this little elephant lovey. And I don't know what it is about these loveys, but they really do make you want to love them. Uh, so this is really cute. I mean, it's a super easy pattern. It did take time because it's a little big. It's got a lot going on. I made it with big twist yarn. Both the gray and the pink variegated are both big twist from Joanne. And these, both of these loveys are gifts. They're not going to go for sale. I might or may not make some loveys for the market I'm going to. I feel like I'm not going to have time because there's a lot I want to do. But yeah, it's really cute. And it's going to be a fun gift for two new babies are coming this winter in our family. So I made one for each of them. My last four plushes. These are my favorites. And one of them is the hardest. So let's start with this one. This pattern is so cute. My son loves animals, especially sea animals, but honestly all animals. We're just currently a little obsessed with sea animals. And I made this walrus because he's talking about these kind of animals all the time. This, the tusks are actually made in worsted weight yarn. And I don't love working with worsted weight yarn. It's just not as fun for me, but I'll do it. And the rest of the body is burnout blanket. And I just think he turned out great. This was a good pattern. It was a little hard you do sew on. This tail is sewn on and these are sewn on. This little piece is sewn on. The tusks are sewn on. There is a fair amount of sewing with this, but gosh, sometimes you just can't deny that these pieces, if you commit to sewing stuff on, are just gorgeous. They just turn out beautiful. All right, before I get to these final three that are sitting here, I wanna talk about two things that I made that I don't have here to show you because I have already gifted them away to the people that they are going to. One is right here. This is a pattern I got on Etsy. This is Captain Hook. I made this for a friend as part of a Pirate Day swap on my son's Disney channel. So we sent it off to our friend Sandra over at Creatively Sandra. If you uh, are a Disney fan and you like pins and fun things, she's good to go watch. So I sent her this Captain Hook. It was my first time doing this type of amigurumi in worsted weight. It was pretty involved and so hard <laughs> so hard but really satisfying it actually so hard but easier than i expected when i looked at the pattern i'm like oh my gosh this looks like i have to design clothing and really it comes together it's broken down so nicely the pattern is broken down so nicely into the different pieces that you put together and how you put them on and the directions are great super high quality pattern there's as part of the pattern, you can also do um, Peter Pan, I and mean, there's a Captain Hook, and a TikTok Croc, and Wendy. I think these will probably only be the kind of uh, crochet things I make for to gift to people, because they just take so much time and effort to be able to recoup that cost. I don't know that that's reasonable. I don't think I'll be able to do that, because the hours that I put into these, this took hours. I would have to charge, and it's this big, I would have to charge so much to make that a profitable experience for myself. So I probably won't ever make them for markets. But anyway, here's the second one. And this one is going to a friend who should receive it today. And I don't think she's gonna watch this video anytime soon. So I think I'm safe. But here's a picture of this one. It is Jack Sparrow. And this one was even a little bit harder than Captain Hook. Not gonna lie, um, maybe a, a fair amount harder than Captain Hook, but he turned out really cute. And I think she's gonna love him. And I think that uh, they were totally worth it because the ladies that I sent them to are people that I love and are near and dear to me. And I would put in that much effort and so much more to make them smile. So hopefully they do. If you guys are nervous about doing that kind of amigurumi, I would say give it a shot. It was so much more approachable than I thought it would be. The pattern, especially the Captain Hook pattern, was very well written and very easy to follow. All right, my final three. So I'm gonna show you this guy because so many people have mentioned him. He's been hanging in my background. This is Funshine Bear. And he was a free pattern. Funshine Bear was a free pattern. 
And I made him, if you remember that premier yarn haul that I had, or that big yarn haul, I bought that mystery-like bag and it came with all that yellow chenille yarn. I made that, I used all of that yarn, not all, actually I still have like one and a half skeins of the five skeins that I had left. This was not, at first I thought it was Parfait Chunky. It's not, it's definitely not. It's way thinner than Parfait Chunky. I think it must be that just chenille. So I ended up holding two strands together, which is why I went through much through so much of the yarn. And so this pattern though, there's a lot of sewing. There's a lot. And there's supposed to be hearts down here, which I didn't add. That would have been two more things to sew on. So this guy is super special. I don't know if he'll just always live in my background or if I'll give him away or uh, if I will sell him. But for now, he's going to live in my background because I love him so much. And he was such a labor of love to make. And I can't believe I made a Care Bear. Anyway, all right, here's my... What do we want first? The hardest or the favorite thing I made this month? I think we're gonna do the hardest. This was the hardest thing I made this month. This is Primp the Penguin. I have had this pattern, and honestly, Jack Sparrow might be the hardest thing I made this month, but we don't have him here to talk about, so we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> Primp the Penguin is the hardest thing I made this month for so, so many reasons. First of all, the all these color changes up here at the top were not my favorite. I don't love doing that. I did it and I will do it again. I would make this again. I think it would be easier if I made it again. Um, but getting everything to line up right and I felt like my counts, I had to keep adjusting my counts. You know, you have to do that because a lot of that's tension based and it's very individual. So I had to keep readjusting my counts to make sure that it lined up as close to correct as possible. And you do that all the way down here. This is all color changes all the way down. And then you have to sew on all of this stuff. You have to sew on the hood and you sew on each of these individual spikes. You sew on the tail, you sew on the feet and you sew on the beak. So let's see what we're at there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 things to sew on. Is that right? A lot. You're sewing on a lot of stuff on this guy. And it just is finicky. It's just, it's finicky. And even going on the hood, like the hood, if you guys have made, has anyone made Print the Penguin before? When you're doing decreases, the designer has all the decreases happening in some points on one side and none on the other. Like you would start, my starting place was somewhere back here and I would do 12 and then I do my color changes and decrease somewhere in front and then do decreases over here. And every time I would still do 12 going across here. The way the pattern was written, I, I had to have faith that it was gonna turn out and it did, it turned out, but oh my gosh, I was nervous the whole time. But I think he's really cute. I will make him again. Uh, I think he's really cute. I think he'll sell really well. I think he's a showstopper, right? I, I've owned this pattern for so long. This is one of the first patterns I bought and I was just too scared to make it. So I feel triumphant, I made it. My favorite pattern of the month was a free pattern from Wonder Crochet. And I told you guys already in this video that Monsters is my favorite Disney movie. And look, it's Mike Wazowski and he's so cute. And I, he's easy to make. I would say this is gonna be mine, I'm gonna keep him forever, except for he is so easy to make that I can make a few more. So if I decide to sell one, it's not gonna be terrible for me. Now, she does put these things on in felt. I have not become a master of felt yet. So I just crocheted this green and this black here rather than using green and black felt. And I just made a mouth rather than using a felt mouth. I kind of just gave him a little sideways smirk um but this is my favorite what do you guys think i there was a lot there was a lot this month going on and i think there'll be even more next month because i'm going to be focusing on smaller things quantity over quality maybe still quality i still have to make fun things that make me a uh, spark joy in my heart but also i'm going to try and make a lot of little things for the market 
So thank you guys for hanging with me. This was a really long one. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I have had such a good time getting to know you guys. Please find me on Instagram. Right here is my Instagram, which is a chore because I can tell you by this part of the editing process of this video, I am really tired of adding things to the screen. <laughs> but you all are worth it. So uh, I come back, I will be starting to do a lot of market prep videos. We're gonna go through all the patterns I own and figure out which ones are the most user-friendly and the most marketable so that we can start prepping for this market that I have uh, at the end of October and another one in November. Uh, it's been super fun. You guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you all really soon. Bye.